Not true, huh? I mean, what a lesson. I, you talk about humility. Uh, that's one of the most humbling things that I've experienced in Africa is the joy in these people's lives when they have nothing, but they do have the Lord. And uh, boy, when they go to church, it means everything to them. You know, I'm a preacher, as you know, and uh, if I preach for less than an hour, they figure I've cheated them. <laughs> what? I walk 30 kilometers for an, uh, a 40 minute sermon? You know, come on, give me three more of those. But it's, it's just life for them, uh, their faith. Let's look at some pictures that you brought along of your, of your work in Zambia. Just kind of walk us through this, uh, Austin. Yeah, this, this photo right here is um, just one of the numerous rocks uh, all throughout Africa and Zambia. They, they paint these things because AIDS is such a big problem there, but they want to make sure that people, people know about that. Yeah, really. Um, this is like, like we were talking about, kids, kids don't really have toys around mm -hmm. there. And so this is what this little boy had as his toy. It's, it's a really cool picture just because it, like I said, it shows what we take for granted. Oh, and there's what we were talking about, a little girl <laughs> with a baby on her back. Yeah, you know, this, this little girl is obviously caring for her younger brother or sister mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this is... That's a local condo. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a local Zambian house, and yeah. that was new for me, too. I, I never imagined what people actually lived in until I went over there. Have you gone inside? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty small. Pretty small. This is a tire swing. <laughs> How crazy is that? That's a tire swing, but there's no tire there. Yeah, that's, that's just the rim. Just <laughs> the rim. My goodness. And look at this little guy carrying water. Yeah, that, that's one of the things that you realize when you go over to Zambia, too, is that many of these kids do have to begin working when they're very little. And so that, that boy was obviously, you know, providing the water for the household that day. Let me ask you, I mean, you are 16, so, you know, this is a grown-up question. You're having success. How is success impacting you? I think you've raised well over a million dollars. You're getting a lot of praise, a lot of adulation. I'm sure that uh, there's organizational uh, ingredients now that are encroaching on you. Um, what's success doing to you? Um, you know, really, I think that success is, is making me and, and everybody around us realize uh, that there's one person that could do that, and that's God. And it, it's cool because success makes us continually focus on Him and realize how much He has He has been able to to use this small idea. And also, too, success is amazing just because we get to look at that there are 40,000 kids across many nations now that are touched by this, and that they realize that they can go out and make a difference. Success is is something that points us back to to our Creator. With all of the exposure you've had now to Africa, is your dream getting bigger and or are there other dreams that are beginning to emerge in your, in your heart? Yeah, you know, one of my dreams from the very beginning is just to have every child around the world realize that they can make a difference, whether that be through Hoops of Hope or, you know, going out and walking miles to make a difference, that they can realize that they don't have to wait to be an adult, that they can do something now Actually, 1 Timothy 4.12 calls for us young people to go out and be a light into the world. What's it say? 1 Timothy 1.12 says, do not let anybody look down on you because you're young. Mm -hmm. That's the that's part of the verse that everyone knows, but it goes on to say, yeah. set an example for the believers. Yeah, yeah. I think in the King James Version, let no one despise your youth. I mean, what a, how, true, how true that is. You know, Timothy... Uh, had been assigned the responsibility of pastoring the church in Ephesus by the Apostle Paul mm -hmm. when he was only about 21 or 22. So, you know, when Paul says, let no one despise your youth, you know, Timothy was struggling with the very fact that a lot of the older people in that church in Ephesus were looking down on him because he was so young. What about you? Do people look down on you because you're young or because of what you've done and they're looking up to you? Um, I think that, yeah, there are probably some people that look down on me, but they won't say it to my face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope not. Now, you're going into grade 11 in the fall. Yes. Um, you um, have a few years, well, two more years in high school. Uh, do you intend to go to college? Yes, definitely. What do you want to study? Um, I, I feel like God is calling me right now to study political science, actually, in college. Uh, I, I, I can see it now. Senator Gutwein from Phoenix, Arizona. Do you want to be a politician? Uh, yes, that's, that's why I feel God calling me to, yeah. to be right now. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's a noble calling. You know, uh, politicians are often dissed by people. But, uh, you know, in fact, um, I heard one pundit yesterday on the news talking about politicians, you know, holding their finger to the wind and whatever way the wind's blowing, that's the way they, they go. But there are politicians, and you know them, 
who uh, stand for their pr principles and are courageous and literally become salt and light in the culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all the uh, international experience you're having, there's no doubt that uh, you're going to be much more prepared than most. So you have um, the support of your family, of course. They're, they're keen on what you're doing and what you will do, I expect. Yes, definitely. Tell me about the impact of your mom and dad in your life. Um, I think that, you know, my mom and dad have a huge impact on my life just because from when I was young, uh, my parents led me, led me to faith. I think that's, that's so important to, to be able to grow up in a Christian household because there, there are so many kids out there that, you know, their, their parents aren't exactly walking with the Lord. And I think that's probably one of the biggest impacts that my parents have had on me is that they are absolutely and they continue to guide me yeah. in his footsteps. Do you have your license? Yes, I do. Ho, ho. How long have you had it? I've had it for about two months now. Are you driving around Phoenix on your own? Yes, I am. Whoa. Do you have a GPS? No. Phoenix is pretty uh, much on a grid, isn't it? It's kind of north, south, east, west. Hard to get lost there. Um, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't gotten lost no, yet. No. And what do you, you drive your dad's car or do you have your own car? Um, no, actually I have a car for me to drive. It's not really mine, but ah, it's okay. for me to Hard drive. for you to drive. Yes. Right. So there's certain strings attached. Yes. That you, way when my sister gets older, she can have it too. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you pay for your own gas? Um, yes, sometimes. Do you have a part-time job? I do, yes. What, what do you do? I work at a martial arts studio down in Arizona. Really? Yes. Doing what? I teach, teach karate to kids. You teach karate to kids? Yes, I do. Well, there you go. How long have you been studying karate? Um, for about three years now. Wow. You don't want to mess with this kid. <laughs> and what do you do for fun? Um, you know, for fun, I, I just really like to, to hang out with my friends sometimes. I, I love to swim down in mm. Arizona. That's, that's mm. a big thing. That's a good thing in Arizona. Yes. <laughs> and you have um, uh, a fairly normal relationship with your friends and, and schoolmates? Yeah, definitely. You know, when I'm, not, when I'm not traveling and stuff, I'm able to, to be back there and to, to have a good relationship. And do you have a hard time sometimes connecting the dots when you're back from Zambia with your friends and relatives and peers in terms of what concerns them and you know what concerns kids on the other side? You know, that's, that's one of the big things that you always take away when you come back to, to America and, you know, just different countries is that you realize how much we actually have here in North America and, and kids back there. It's, it's hard to comprehend and to explain to people. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you have to see it to, to really understand it. The book's called Take Your Best Shot. Austin Goodwine is the author. He is the founder of Hoops of Hope. Uh, the, the website is what? Hoopsofhope.org. .org. Hoopsofhope.org. Thanks yes. for coming our way. Thank you so much. All the best.